Welcome to Hofstra Today. We get an inside look at the Hofstra baseball team. A celebrity comes to visit Hofstra's campus. And Max and I get to go on a fun egg hunt. All that more at and around Hofstra Today. Welcome to Hofstra Today. I'm Max Sacco. And I'm Gabe James. Well, Gabe, it is the best time of year if you're a sports fan. Opening day, one day away tomorrow. Major League Baseball starts up. I don't know about you. Growing up in Chicagoland, I was always a diehard White Sox fan with my mom growing up on the south okay. side as well. California, a slew of teams to pick from up and down the coast. Who are you a fan of? You know, some people might be surprised to say that I'm actually a diehard Dodgers fan. Really? My mother's from L.A., and I was always just like, yes, Dodgers is my home <laughs> team, even though I am born and raised in Oakland, but it's okay because my father cheers for the A's. I thought you would have been an A's fan for sure. You know, I could talk about baseball all day, but let's get into what's happening at and around Hofstra University. National Public Health Week is from April 4th to April 10th. Hofstra University School of Health Professions and Human Services are celebrating this momentous week by hosting numerous events. Subjects discussed include mental health, hygiene, population, community, and the COVID-19 pandemic. Panels will also include conversations about career paths in public health and the community surrounding it. Look on the events calendar for specific information and times regarding events happening this week. The 18th Annual Great Writers, Great Readers series is taking place on April 13th at 6 p.m. The event will feature Jason Schneiderman to highlight the importance of writing and literature in a liberal arts education. The event will take place in the Guthart Cultural Center Theater, and the event is free and open to the public, but advanced registration is required on the Hofstra events calendar. The Muslim community is currently celebrating Ramadan, which is a month-long observation of fasting, prayer, and reflection. The Muslim Student Association here at Hofstra is offering free iftar meals to break the fast at sunset every Monday through Wednesday in Plaza Room West at 7.30 p.m. You can reserve a time through the link in the MSA Instagram bio. The Muslim Student Association is also hosting an event about Islamic phobic awareness hosted by recent alum Manmeet Carr, who will speak about her experience with Islamophobia and racial and religious misprofiling. The event will take place next Wednesday at 6.15 p.m. in Plaza Room East. For any questions, you can direct message Hofstra MSA on Instagram. The Zarb School of Business hosts Capture the Flag Cybersecurity Competition. On April 15th from 1 to 5 p.m., the event will feature teams of two to three students playing an entry-level Jeopardy-style contest. Each team must contain one member from the Zarb School of Business, and students will have a chance to win a scholarship prize of up to $3,000 if they place in the top three. No programming experience is required, and all participants will receive a $20 gift card. Registration for this exciting event closes on Friday, April 8th. Author Augustine Segawick is discussing his book, Coffee Land, One Man's Dark Empire in the Making of Our Favorite Drug, a story revealing the beginnings of coffee in El Salvador and how it grew to be an area of major capitalism. This event is on Wednesday, April 13th at 2.40 p.m. in Breslin Hall. On Thursday, April 14th from 8 to 10 p.m., the Hofstra Department of Music will present Hofstra's Chamber and Symphonic Orchestra in concert with director Adam Glazier. Performing characters, this free viewing will include a variety of musical pieces within its repertoire, such as Overture from Beethoven. The concert will take place in the Tony and Martin Sosnoff Theater and in the John Cranford Adams Playhouse. Students can RSVP on the Hofstra events calendar. On Tuesday, April 19th, from 4.20 to 5.45 p.m., a sustainable fashion show will be taking place at the Cultural Center Theater in honor of Earth Day. This free and public event will include a runway of students modeling innovative creations of green clothing, whether that be thrifted items or pieces made from recycled material. Students can RSVP on the Hofstra events calendar as advanced registration is required. Tonight from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m., join the Student Government Association in welcoming daily show host, comedian, and political commentator Trevor Noah for a presented evening of moderated and collective discussion in the John Cranford Adams Playhouse. SGA Vice President Bernice Aquino will host alongside Trevor for a Q&A night you will not want to miss. 
Students can RSVP on the Hofstra events calendar and doors will open at 7 p.m. for this exciting Hofstra community exclusive event. Stay tuned for this week's upcoming weather forecast and you won't want to miss our in-studio interview and our exciting baseball package later. The cereal's good. It's like we never leave here at Hofstra today. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Now let's go to Crystal Arenas with the weather report. Thanks, Max and Gabe. I'm Christopher Bermudez, and this is your five-day weather forecast. They say April showers lead to May flowers. I hope that is true because we can expect rain in the incoming days. In the next hour, we can predict the weather to slow down, which will lead to heavy clouds for the rest of the day. Temperatures will reach a high of 52 and a low of 43. Thursday will continue on and off with showers and wind, with wind speeds reaching a high of 21 miles per hour. There will be thunderstorms in the evening that will give way to cloudy skies overnight. Temperatures will reach a high of 49 and a low of 47. Now let's take a look at how the rest of the week will take shape here in Hempstead. Friday, temperatures will reach a high of 57 and a low of 44. During the day, we should have a mix of sunshine and clouds that will give you some potential time for outside activities. If you have plans at night, you should bring a rain jacket with you because you can expect mostly cloudy skies with a mix of showers late at night. On Saturday, we will start the day with a mixture of sunshine and clouds with a 30% chance of rain later in the day. Temperatures will reach a high of 55, and on Sunday, you can expect partly cloudy skies with wind gusts topping at 15 miles per hour. It should be a great end to a rainy week. There may not be a lot of sun forecasted for the rest of the week, but we can look forward to beautiful flowers in May. That's all for the five-day weather forecast. I'm Christopher Mudez. Back to you, Max and Gabe. Thanks, Crystal. This weekend, Gabe and I went on an egg hunt throughout campus, and we mean throughout campus, to celebrate the beginning of spring. Let's take a look. We're going to be heading out on a spring egg hunt. Let's see what our first clue is. This thoughtful man sits and looks out on Hofstra's beautiful campus while reading a good book. Oh, Walter. You can lead me then. I didn't know he had a name. You, yeah. can, you can lead, Gabe. <laughs> wow, that's so cute. Look at Walter. Why are there little flowers on him? I don't know. I need a moment to relax. You know what they say, stop and look at the koi fish. Oh, oh I'm sensory a, garden. That's you know, this is really appealing to my pride guide spirit right now. Oh my gosh. What's the egg? <laughs> Gabe, I got it. Okay, yay, open it. I thought you guys were gonna put it in the water. It's time to hit the books. 10 stones high? 10 stories high, it's excellent. Somebody library. can't write, somebody can't write that. <laughs> oh judge. my God. It's perfectly great handwriting. It's not in the library? Okay, here. But it's not in the library. Yes. So. What? Why, why, <laughs> why? <laughs> We're actually dumb. It's all good. I could really use an afternoon pick me up. Maybe a macchiato. Oh, a refresher. They're making us. They're, you're making me hike the universe, man. So you guys are trying to kill me in game. You don't think. You don't think. No. Why would they do that? Here, you go check. I send it. Oh, yay. You will open it. I'm going to go get my tea. I would love to show off some Hofstra pride, and I need to send something in the mail. 
Thanksgiving post office. We're getting post office. Where are we going? I, I don't know. I was getting my tea. Post office. Max and Gabe, Max and Gabe, the producers put them in a dark hallway. It's Max and Gabe. Max and Gabe. Max and Gabe. All right, uh, let's think. Are we in the right area at least? Maybe we should go to the Amazon locker. Wait, oh, is that it? Wait, that's not it. That's, that's, that's paper. Do you think it's in the front of the bookstore? We came down here for no reason. Oh my God, it's oh in the plan. Oh my God. Really need to have a strong blank for somebody to live with them in this hall. Oh my God! Wait. Alliance. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> all right, I'm checking all these baskets. Boom! Thought you could do it again. I knew it would be in one of these things. Now that we have our pride merch, let's cheer on our favorite team, or just count the days to graduate. Y'all making us walk to the Mac? Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. All right, load up. <laughs> oh. There's no room for my legs back there. They can work. I'm not walking on the back. Uh, see you. I can't tell if that's an egg or if that's a orange. I can't tell. I hope it's an egg and it's orange. <laughs> Hold up, might be in the crate. Banking on the crate. It could be in the crate. Please be in the crate. And I just embarrass myself on TV. Tyler, what are we? I think we gotta go outside. Yeah, yeah, it's outside. Oh! Oh my god! That was oh, the wow. worst, that was the worst one. <laughs> Need a place to hang out with friends? Or maybe you want to check out an SGA meeting? The greenhouse? Where's the greenhouse? In the pride den. <laughs> oh, here's the other half. Oh. Uh. <laughs> and no clue. <laughs> so. No clue. Uh, we don't have a clue. Betrayal. Hold up, let me get the other half. Betrayal. Um, yeah, well. So, uh, producers, what's the clue? Gabe and I found the egg. Our final clue is the place that always feels like home. Reporting for Austria today, I'm Max Zacco. And I'm Gabe James. And that was our spring egg hunt. Oh, this is big, it's not bad. Oh, shower. Shower, anything? Yeah. When we come back, our entertainment anchor, Max Coven, will be sitting down with students from the cast from the drama and dance department, Play Rumors. Prescription drug pricing points to corporate mouth. Freedom of the press is about your right to know. It's about your right to be informed. Today, no. there are real threats to press freedom. And your right to know about the world around us. We must protect our right to know, no matter what kind of news is important to you. Before it's too late, understand the threats. Protectpressfreedom.org. Donors Choose. Support a classroom. Build a future. At DonorsChoose.org, we want students in every community to have the tools they need for a great education. And now more than ever, students and teachers need your help to get books, art supplies, science kits, and so much more. 
here's what to do. Go to DonorsChoose.org, find a request to support, and we'll make sure they get exactly what they need. Learn more at DonorsChoose.org. Donors Choose. Support a classroom. Build a future. Thanks, Gabe. I'm Max Coven, and we're live in Studio B with the stars and cast members of the play Rumors. Thank you for sitting down with me today. Let's kick it off. Outline the play for us. Tell me a little bit about what we, to, what we are to expect as audience members coming to see the spectacular performance. Yeah, so um, the play starts. There are four couples who are going over to their friend's house for their 10th wedding anniversary. And it starts very high energy because right from the beginning as the first couple gets there, nothing is going as planned. And you say nothing's going as planned. Give me a little bit more detail. What, what is not going right? So the number one thing is that Charlie is upstairs bleeding um, and his wife is missing. Um, so it's a lot of the conflict is just driven by what some people know and other people are things are being kept from them. So it's just a balance act of like who knows what. And so there's a lot of secrets. There's a lot of anxiety. The plot is pretty high the whole time. The angst is there. Tell me about each one of your characters and how do you guys interact as a whole in the cast? Um, so I play Claire Gans, um, and a lot of the play has to do with how the couples interact with each other because each one has a very specific dynamic that kind of helps move the plot and the conflict, um, and each person has, you know, their own motive for what they want to do. Like, Claire just wants to sit down and have a drink and not really be a part of anything happening because... That's not what she came here for. Um, and so each of us with our different motivations are just creating more conflict for each other, um, which of course creates all this wacky, crazy fun that happens in the play <laughs> and all these mishaps. And so that there, there's a lot of you know, stuff to unbury from that. And it's gonna lead to trauma, it's gonna lead to trouble, <laughs> and it's gonna lead to an unexpected party. We are all gonna wanna drink after this. So tell me about this. You know, the play aired originally on stage in 1988. I know we discussed we haven't seen the original, but how did we prepare to take on these characters? How did you embody it as a whole? So when you stepped on stage, you are no longer this, you are now that character. Yeah, it was a lot of um, physical work because it's a very physical show. It's a farce, which means there's a lot of falling down, running up and down stairs, going through doors, different things like that. So we would do a lot of exercises about finding the character in our body and how the character would carry themselves throughout the show. and what that means for each character. And so for young and coming actors and actresses stepping into the Hofstra drama and dance department, what is a piece of advice you would offer them before auditions or while being on stage once they are cast? Um, I mean, I, Joey talked about this before, but I think just like we all came in kind of ready to work and ready to just kind of push each other and really like feed off of each other's energy, which I think we all do as a cast really, really well. And you know, the most important part of this is that the play begins when again? Oh, at the climax of the show, yes. basically. Okay, <laughs> very exciting. So, you know, this is very, very, very exciting, and I'm personally excited to come see it. I know the play begins on Friday, so this is definitely not a play you want to miss out on. Get ready to buy your tickets and join the cast of Rumors the next two Fridays and Saturdays at 8 p.m., Sundays at 2 p.m., and for finale, Thursday, April 21st at 8 p.m. With your entertainment news, I'm Max Coben. Back to you, Gabe and Max. Thanks, Max. Stay tuned. National News is after the break. Hey, guys. Hey, what's going on? Oh, How are the kids? Let's go. Where do you see you? Oh, two. One, two, three. Ah, there we go. There we go. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's go. Right here, right here. Ah, let's go. Right there. Let's go. Good to see you guys. First shoe, first shoe. Kate and Willie. Oh my gosh, Kate and Willie, guys. It's so nice to meet you. It's so nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Andres. It's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. My name is Andres. This is my first shoe. It's so nice to meet you guys. I can't believe you guys are here. It's so nice to meet you. So nice to meet you. Hey guys, I'm Andres. Nice to meet you guys. Rookies.
back. Caitlin Bancroft is here with your national news update. Thanks, Max. Hempstead Village Mayor Waylon Hobbs Jr. spoke at Hofstra University on Monday during his State of the Village Address. In his speech, he says the Hempstead Police Department has agreed to wear body cameras while on duty and the village will not pay additional stipends to wear the cameras. The Nassau County Police offers county officers an annual $3,000 stipend for wearing body cameras. Hempstead has the third largest police department on Long Island with 120 sworn officers. The final confirmation vote for Judge Katanji Brown Jackson draws closer now with some Republican support. The full Senate voted to consider her nomination on Monday with a final vote count at 53-47. All 50 Democrats voted in support of her along with three Republicans, Maine's Susan Collins, Alaska's Lisa Murkowski, and Utah's Mitt Romney. This outcome is expected to reflect her final confirmation vote, which would guarantee her a lifetime appointment to the Supreme Court. If confirmed, Judge Jackson would be the first black female justice and the first former defense attorney on the high court. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer wants to hold her confirmation vote by this Thursday. President Joe Biden announced yesterday to allow millions of federal student loan borrowers to freeze their payments until August 31st. This announcement comes less than a month before payments were scheduled to resume. This marks the sixth pause since the beginning of the pandemic. At a news conference, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki says the administration is weighing further extending the suspension on student loan payments. Progressives in the Democratic Party have long called for President Biden to wipe out up to $50,000 per borrower through an executive action. However, Biden has resisted this approach and said he would prefer for any debt cancellation to happen legislatively. That's all for your national news. I'm Caitlin Bancroft. Back to you, Max and Gabe. Don't go anywhere. Our sports update is coming up after the break. Hey you, yeah, you. Have you ever wanted your work to be featured on live TV? Then Director's Cut is the show for you. But Katie, how do I apply? It's easy, just follow these three simple steps. First, go to our Instagram at Director's Cut HU. And while you're there, give us a follow. Next, click the link in our bio. Finally, select the guest submission form and send us your best work. All submissions are welcome from your 27s to your senior films. Don't worry, the 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. Now let's hear all things Hofstra sports with Danny DiCrescenzo. Thanks, Max. Aaron Estrada is a finalist for the Lou Henderson National Player of the Year. This award is given to the best mid-major player in Division I men's basketball. The CAA Player of the Year and CAA First Team member had a spectacular season leading the Pride with 18.5 points and 5 assists per game. He is continuing his, his offseason with those award nominations. Estrada is the only player from the CAA to be nominated for the Henderson Award of one of only 40 nationally. The Hofstra softball team is taking on Fordham at home at 6 p.m. next Wednesday. The Pride have played well lately, riding a two-game win streak. Chile Samantha leads the team in batting average, hitting 375. And Haley Venturini leads the team in ERA with a 2.74 mark. The Pride will return home to most host the Rams after a three-game slate in Virginia, all against James Madison. Be sure to make it to the Diamond next Wednesday to welcome the Pride back to Hempstead. And Hofstra Baseball is facing off against local Full Wagner today at 3.30. The Pride have a winning record at home going 7-4, and they have a winning record overall at 12-10. Brian Morrell leads the Pride with 15 RBIs and a 377 batting average, and L.O. Sujak leads the team in ERA with a 1.42 mark. Come on down to University Field and let out your biggest, loudest roar to support Hofstra baseball. That's all for Hofstra Sports. Back, I'm Danny DiCrescenzo, and back to you, Max and Gabe. Thanks, Danny. Speaking of baseball, field reporter Jake Epstein spoke with the Hofstra baseball team to discuss how their season's gone so far.
Thanks, Max and Gabe. I'm Jay Epstein, and I'm standing outside the home of one of the hottest teams on campus, the Hofstra baseball team. Now, opening day for the MLB may be tomorrow, but these boys are already off to a hot start, going 10-9 and 2-1 and and in conference play. So we're here to talk to some of the coaches and players about what makes this team so special. Anthony, thank you so much for speaking with us today. You guys have been having a great season going forward so far. Where do you guys see yourself going by the end of the season? Uh, I think we got a lot of talented guys on this team. I think our pitching staff's really talented. I think we got a lot of depth in the bullpen. And I think we have a lot of talented position players too. I think we could do whatever we want. I think we could win a CAA championship this year. Recently, in a game, you guys scored 15 runs against Elon. What has your approach been at the plate for your guys this season? Lately, the approach has been when we get into hitting counts, 1-0, 2-0, 3-1 counts, is to really shrink, shrink the strike zone and, and try to think about swinging at just that one pitch that, that you like to hit. I mean, even if it's a strike, you can let it go if it's not the one that you want to hit. So that's what we've been doing better. We've been two-strike hitting better. Guys have been choking up, taking shorter swings with two strikes, putting the ball in play, making that defense uh, work. So uh, lately, that's been working for us. You're an outfielder and a pitcher. What is it like transitioning from playing in the field one day to being on the hill the next? It's being tough being a two-way player, but right. um, just be going out there every day and just working on each aspect of the game, just keeping everything up. When you're on the mound, which pitch are you hoping he calls for? What's your money pitch? Uh, I'd say my money pitch is probably my slider. Uh, I can throw that really in any count at any time, so it kind of works well when I'm behind in the count. I can just slip one over for a strike and not really expecting it. You played many years in the MLB. You've had some great coaches over your career. Is there anything that you've tried to emulate from them into the philosophy of how you're coaching this team? The mental part of baseball is not, not taught enough to young kids. And uh, that's kind of something that I, I kind of help bring. Like, try to teach these guys the, the approach, the, the, the mental approach to hitting, and uh, you know what pitches to look for in certain counts. Cat is... Uh... He's an ex-big leaguer, 14 years of big leagues, hit 290. Uh, I mean, his first year coach at NYIT takes a program that doesn't have many wins and takes it to the World Series. So there's there's not much you can really say about him. He's got the track record. And I think just watching us be able to play, like our last years at Elon, we're, we're clicking as a team together. Since the beginning, um, I've noticed once games started, these guys, they don't give up. I mean, they fight all the way through. There's been a few times where, uh, you know, we've won games in the ninth inning because even if we're behind, uh, these guys believe in themselves and it's nice to have a group like that that keeps fighting throughout the in, until the last out and, and like I said you know we've won some games late in the games and, and it's been nice. Right now we're focused on winning as many games as we can in conference. Um, I don't think it's a good thing to look too far ahead. We're not going to say certain things but I really think that if we play the way we played at Elon this weekend we're going to be having some fun at the end of the year. For Hofstra today I'm Jake Epstein. Back to you in the studio Max and Gabe. And that will do it for this episode of Hofstra Today. For more Hofstra Today content, you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And to relive some of your favorite Hofstra Today moments, you can see all of our old packages and episodes on our YouTube page. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to vote for Hofstra Today for Best Package and Best Production for the Herbies. For Hofstra Today, I'm Max Sacco. And I'm Gabe James. Have a wonderful day, Hofstra.